Welcome back to Development Book Club. Today we continue with the book of Joy, and we will move on to so the obstacles, the pillars of joy. And we'll cover three, the first three of eight, which are perspective, humility, humor. We begin with perspective, where the author shares the work of psychologist Sonia Yumboriski, uh, who she has isolated several, several factors that she's found that have the largest influence on our happiness. Perspective, or the ability to reframe a situation more positively is the chief among these factors. Additionally, our capacity to experience gratitude and our choice to be kind and generous were the others. So note here about uh, the absence of gratitude in this year's books and its inclusion here was presumably from a non-Buddhist psychology. We also hear lots in popular culture on social media about like being grateful, but I don't really find it in the Buddhist literature so far. Another note, uh, he mentions Viktor Frankl, who uh, wrote a great book called Man's Search for Meaning, and he was in Auschwitz and escaped, or was still alive when Auschwitz was liberated. He says that our perspective toward life is our final and ultimate freedom. This is a big thing for him, this sort of, this internal model of freedom. Freedom is not about the ability to buy 500 brands of ketchup or whatever, but it's more about how we respond to what's going on in life. Later, about perspective, the Dalai Lama recommends that we think about where we are suffering in our lives and then, and then think about all the other people who are going through a similar situation. This perhaps is literally the birth of compassion, which means suffering with. And this idea that suffering with reminds us that we are not alone and it, can, it actually lessens our pain. We spoke about this earlier. This recognition of our interdependence begins to soften our rigid sense of self and the boundaries that separate us from others. The Dalai Lama said earlier in the, the, their week of meetings that if, quote, if on the other hand, I relate to others from the perspective of myself as someone different, a Buddhist, let's say, a Tibetan, and so on, he says, I will then create walls to keep me apart from others, unquote. And this leads us to a, a Buddhist line of inquiry that he mentions. He says, where is, he's speaking to Bishop Tutu, he says, where is, Bishop Tutu self. We can say to anyone, where is your self? Two words there, where is your self? We can't find it. Buddhists follow this line of inquiry to reduce our attachments to our identity, recognizing that the less attached we are, the less defensive and reactive we will be and the more effective and skillful we can be. And although I don't think they meant it, I, I sort of think here about uh, what's being called identity politics now encouraged to hang on to our identities very tightly in the sense, uh, generally in the sense of being uh, marginalized or victimized. And there's sort of a, a, an opposite path by, uh, given by the Dalai Lama here. I think there's maybe more to be discussed there. Moving on to the second pillar of joy is humility. The Dalai Lama returns here to an early point in his life when he would become nervous about having to give formal teachings. He said, quote, I would forget that I'm just talking as a human being to fellow human beings. I would think of myself as something special and that, and that kind of thinking would make me feel isolated, end quote, he says. And he also says, when I'm at a very holy or formal meeting, I am truly thinking that I wish something would go wrong, end quote. Needing to feel that we are bigger than others, as we mentioned here, this idea of feel bigger often comes from a nagging fear that we are actually smaller. And he mentions a quote, it says, wisdom is like rainwater, both gather in the lowest places. Pillar number three is humor. And the thing about the Dalai Lama is he's always laughing. Uh, a number of years ago, I went and saw him speak on my birthday, actually. And I was a very serious, philosophically-minded person, and I was expecting him to be like this serious, like, austere, cold monk. And he was actually speaking at a women's conference and he was sharing the stage with Maria Shriver who hosted him. And he had apparently ma made her travel to Dharamsala in India in order to come and to speak in California. I think that's sort of, my understanding was that he, since he probably gets requests all the time and he wanted to make sure people were serious and they would travel to India to meet with him first. And he's up there laughing on stage the whole time, intermittently speaking wisely about you know, a little quote and then laughing again appropriately. And additionally, the guys here, the, he and Bishop Tutu, are repeatedly giving each other shit as they interact, like sort of shit-talking to each other. Uh, and here is keeping things light, as we mentioned with 
humility. And I wonder here when we speak about right speech, there's one part of it is about not speaking sort of trivially and about like water cooler chat. And not they're speaking trivially, but that there's like, I guess this sort of the serious side of me wants to be like, hey, like there's truth in every joke. You know, when we're talking shit to somebody, like there's always a grain of truth there. And if we're giving that grain sort of water to, to feed some sort of negativity. We will continue next time with the rest of the pillars of joy. Thank you for watching.